Hi everybody, it's Amory from 4 Honey Bees Cottage and today we're gonna to be doing something just a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about Beauty Counter Products, our new introduction at the store. We are gonna be doing a makeover on our gorgeous model Amanda today, our new friend here that's going to be really just loving this whole thing. She's very, very brave coming into the store with a fresh, clean face so that you guys can see the transformation from A to Z and we're gonna put her in into a very glamorous, hopefully she will love it, evening look. So let's get started. Um, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do at home so that you kind of see what, um, what different tricks and different steps that I do that maybe will help you. Um, I'm in no position to be saying that I'm a professional makeup artist or anything like that, but I do love makeup, I always have, and I think that's what turns me on to this Beauty Counter products is that I was always a makeup and skincare junkie, and now I really, truly do love the products. They're good for your skin, they're natural, and I really feel as though that I can really bring this to you guys and that you're gonna love it. And you know I'm awfully fussy about stuff that comes into the store, so I wouldn't do it unless I really felt like it was a, it was a great addition. So, are you ready? Ready. Okay, so first up is um, we're gonna prep and prime her skin. I always like to start, if your skin is um, freshly washed, it's always a little easier to moisturize and things like that. But one of the products that I'm really loving, and I, I use it for a lot of different things, is this um, Nourishing Rose Water Mist. Um, if my skin is dry, if I, um, say washed my face and then there was a little bit of a break in between of when I'm going to put my day cream on or whatnot. I just do a little spritz with this. You can also revive your makeup midday and just do a quick spritz. It um, just really refreshes your skin. I love it, especially if you're working in a dry environment where you feel like your skin just really gets flat by midday. So anyways, Amanda, just go ahead and close your eyes and it's just gonna be a gentle misting right over your skin. So it's just a prep and a prime, it smells great. Just a little bit of refreshing, um, just to kind of really moisturize. You can use it for so many different things. I even sometimes spray it on my brushes, um, like my foundation brush and whatnot, if I want it just a little dewier look. Um, so with that said, then um, we're going to apply a little bit of our day cream here. This is the Rejuvenating Day Cream. I'm loving the Rejuvenating line for my skin. I have um, very combination skin. So I su suffer from melasma, um, which is a pigmentation disorder in my skin. So it's something that I have to battle religiously. Um, this product just seems to really, the whole rejuvenation line really seems to work well with my skin. Um, there's a couple different lines of um, nourishing and then we have our one, two, and three different um, specialty lines. Um, that one is a plumping, one is a vitamin C, and one is um, more for blemishes. So anyways, I just applied the day cream right onto her skin, just kind of tapping it in. I'm very careful not to go up above the um, cheekbone here because if you get into un your under eye, it becomes too heavy. In your evening or in your day, that's a great time to apply lightly around your um, eye cream. So when I'm going to do my makeup, I just do a little bit of that. Let's press it in. What do you think? Just like that. Okay, good. So the next product that I use that I am just really loving is um, the Dew Skin. And I think we'll use number two on her because it's, we're going into the summer months. So this is a great way I am religious about not getting sun on my face. So especially with the melasma, I have to be very, very cautious. This Dew Skin has an SPF 20 in it, which is great. Um, I use it as um, a moisturizer, balancer. It's basically a tinted moisturizer, but there's something about it and it holds true to the name of a Dew Skin. It really gives your skin a very, very beautiful finish. So I love it if I am on a Sunday and I am just running around and don't really feel like doing a lot of makeup. Dew Skin is what I put on. Um, if I'm going and just doing things with my kids or whatnot, if I'm coming to work, maybe I want more of a foundation on 
and I still put this on underneath. So that's the dew skin. And like I said, for Amanda, we're gonna use a number two on my skin um, now going into the summer months because sometimes I'll do a spray tan on my body, but I don't do it on my face. I'll use a number three now. So we'll just put a little bit of this into my hands. Always making sure that you've washed your hands and that they're fresh and clean. And we're just going to go ahead and apply this to her skin. That's not heavy at all. It just feels very light. And again, I just kind of press it into the skin. And it really, she could just do this and that would be plenty. There's, there's just enough coverage there that it really does look beautiful on her skin um, where you don't feel like you're going and you have nothing on. But what did that take, 30 seconds and you just put it on, you're covered, your SPF is covered and you have a little bit of coverage. So, you know, maybe you don't look so morning. And so you're ready to go and just run around with your kids. Okay, next step is the probably one of the best sellers in the line. And that's the Tint Skin Foundation. Fabulous product. Um, it's a fine line of coverage, which we all need, but also a complexion that um, doesn't look fully caked on with makeup. That's outdated for any age group at this point. It is important that it's a great coverage but that it's also sheer and it also provides some luminosity in your skin. So we're going to use on her, the linen color it comes in a multitude of different colors so that you can find, um, you can always ask for help in trying to find the perfect foundation color for you. The key to this is this fabulous brush. Now maybe some of you have a brush similar, but this is the brush that Beauty Counter sells for the foundation, it is fabulous. It is the perfect um, density so that it doesn't, um, it kind of buffs your skin. You'll see as I do it on Amanda, it kind of buffs your skin. I do it in a circular motion around the face and it really makes sure that it's not going to settle in to your fine lines and wrinkles. It almost perfects your skin. I love this product. So I always am recommending that if you do this, do this with it. Spend that little bit of extra money because it really does make the world of difference with your foundation. Um, so another product that I'm going to use in this step is I love this plumping oil, number two. Um, it is very nourishing. And again, um, you can use this to mix it into your night routine um, with your night cream. You can use this mixed into your day cream and you can mix it right into your foundation for a little bit of a beautiful um, finish. And so for an evening look, um, I'm, I'm loving that. So I'm gonna use those both on her. So I'm just going to put a little bit into the palm of my hand. I'm sure there's a better technical way to do this, but this is the way I do it at home. I just give that a little shake. You don't need much of this. It's very condensed, comes with a little dropper and you'll just go ahead and put two drops plenty in there. Just gonna set that out of the way. Take your brush, go ahead and mix it up just like you were painting. And so I start with um, cheeks like this, right over on top of the forehead, down the nose, around the chin, that's where I start, so that you're kind of gonna evenly distribute this. This goes all over your whole face. So we're just gonna go ahead over to the, and you can see the motion that I'm doing. Um, it's, it's very um, light. You're not you know, forcing your skin to do anything. You're just kind of working with it. Okay, so after that, I would say the number two best-selling product in this line are the concealer pens. Um, for Amanda, we're gonna use light because she is a very fair skin. And what I love about it is it's convenient. It's one pen like this. You can see there's a little brush right already on it. So it's not an extra step. Um, you click the top of the pen, two or three little clicks and you're good to go. So I go in with this next. And I am going to, if you could just look up, Amanda, what I love, just with your eyes, actually, so keep your chin down and just look up with your eyes, perfect. So I go into the corners of the eyes 
bringing this down kind of in a V, I get as close to the lash line as I can because I believe it's important to get that purple out of the eyes. And then most women have darkness coming right in this area and it can act as though it's a little highlighter on top of the cheekbones for just a little bit of definition. It's important to get that inside corner of the eye. We're trying to just take the purple tints out of our skin and around the eye, just make sure you're going to be very, very gentle. This is a place where you could use, um, I'm sure you've seen some blending sponges and things like that. This would be a great spot for you to spray a little bit of the rose water on your blending um, sponge and go ahead and tap the product in. Um, another way that I do it is I just come back with my foundation brush and after I've kind of tapped it in, and just give it a quick blending. Okay, so our next step is I am going to go in and work on her eyebrows. Um, people laugh at me because I'm a little bit of an eyebrow Nazi, but I believe that they truly frame your face. It's very important that if you have the luck of overplucked eyebrows at this point, it's so passe. It really is not classic. It really does not define your face. It's no, not doing you any justice if you are overplucking your eyebrows. There are plenty of places where you can go and get an eyebrow consultation, get them waxed, get them done properly, and do not overpluck because at that point, you get to a certain age and they will not grow back. So if you're in a spot <clears throat> where you're starting to feel like maybe your, your um, eyebrows are starting to not be as thick as you want, there's some really easy tricks that I have found that really help define your brows. And this is a great step for it. So first thing, this is the eyebrow pencils. This is medium. Um, she's pretty fair skinned. So we'll try this color and we'll see. We may have to blend with a dark gray. I've not do, done her makeup before, so we'll have to just see how this looks on her. Um, but this is the medium. What I like about their eyebrow pencil is that it also comes with the spoolie on the end, which is such a key and important thing. So the first step I do is I brush the eyebrow hairs upwards. Okay, now I am just going to start at the inside corner of the brow. And for Amanda's, I would like to see them come in just a little bigger. Your eyebrow should be in a little bit further than your eye on either end. So if you don't have that, it's easy enough to create it. So, chin up just a little, perfect. So we're gonna start at the inside corner and using very feather light, small strokes, we're gonna create that inside corner. Now, the next step is you're going to say underneath your brow, all the way to the point where if you opened up your eyes, I'm just gonna turn you so you could see, it would be right in the center of your pupil. That should be where your point of your brow is. And if you don't have that, then we're just going to create it. So we're gonna start at the underneath hairs and we're gonna work our way, staying on that underneath line, all the way to the point, giving it some real structure. Then we're going to switch to the upper part of her brow at the top point of that point and we're gonna start carrying the line down. And like I said, I wanna create a point for her to extend her brow just a little bit past her natural brow. This happens to be a very good color for her because you don't want it to look so penciled in that it looks completely fake. You're working with the color you have. All right, so, so far I've done the underneath of the brow in the inside corner and the outer brow from point down, creating that angle. Now you have a very good line to follow and to go ahead and, and fill in. So now I'm going to create
a kind of a square and the inside brow. Now I've not blended anything in, but you can kind of see the difference in of her brows. You can see what that does for her face. You can see how it frames. You can see that it still looks very, very natural. Don't be afraid of this. Give it some trying. So we're going in here and we're going to create the top line all the way to your point. It's like you're filling, you're like you're coloring in a coloring book at this point, pretty easy. And then you're gonna go switch and go right down to the bottom so that you have a nice point on the side. All right, so when you're done with that, it should look like this. This is where the spoolie comes in and is the killer most important part. If you leave it like this, it looks okay. It also looks just a little dated because it just looks like when the girls in the 50s used to just pencil in their brow and call it a day. So now we're updated women and we go like this and we just brush that in to her brow. And then I can just fill in wherever I feel it needs just a bit more. And I'm gonna just create a bit of a point on her that she may not normally wear for a little bit more of a frame. And this is why this is probably the longest part of my whole makeup routine because I'm ridiculous about my eyebrows, but I really truly do feel is that it is important to frame it in. So you can look straight ahead so you can see the difference in her brows at this point and you can see what it's doing to the side of her face and her eye. It really starts to frame in her face and it looks great. Beauties. Okay, let's go on to this side. Go ahead and look into the camera. And it looks great. And you can see how all of a sudden it's really starting to come to life. When you're picking your pencil, really don't be afraid to just go a little shade darker. Whoops, I almost dropped ours. It's okay to go just a little bit darker than your hair color. So for me, I use the dark, but I have very dark hair. Um, but for Amanda, her hair is a, like a softer blonde. And you would think maybe I should use the light pencil, but your eyebrows are naturally a little bit of a darker color. So that's fine to go ahead and, and do that. Okay, great. So the next step we're going to do is just a teeny bit of contouring. They have a great brush, um, and I'm not even sure what this one is called, but it's just a super small angled brush. Um, it's a great size for when you're going to go ahead and do a little bit of contouring on, say, a special evening or whatnot. Um, they have a couple bronzing powders that I really love for this. Um, this is the number one matte bronzer. It's important that it's a matte when you're going ahead and doing your contouring because if you all of a sudden go ahead and put a, something really shimmery into a place where you want to be sunken in, then all of a sudden you're drawing attention to there. That's not what you wanna do. We're gonna draw attention to the cheekbone, not the underneath part. So you'll kinda see what I'm going to do with this. Again, I take my contouring brush, go ahead and get the product on, give it a tap. And I start probably, oh, what is that maybe an inch inch and a half from the corner of her lip and i'm going to go straight up towards her ear if you could just turn um and i'm going to go underneath her cheekbone so if she sucked in and make a weird fishy face go ahead and that is you can really see where that is okay go ahead and relax and we're just going to go ahead in and draw an imaginary line now, this may look incredibly severe to you, and you will see when I'm done why I'm doing it this way, okay? So then we're gonna go down into the jawbone. Years ago, I think I saw this on Oprah years ago, and I've always stuck with it, but it really does define your jaw. So I go right on into the ear, and I go ahead right down in to the jaw. Just like that, making just an imaginary line. Great, and so now we're gonna do this side. Um, and the other place that I go ahead and do it is, I'm just gonna push your headband back just a teensy bit, is I do the corners of my forehead and bring it down. Okay. 
balancing out the skin and where you have color. Then I do just a bit at the tip of the nose. And that is going to shorten your nose. I'm gonna go in with a little different brush here. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna go in with this brush. And just a little bit of a pointy, smaller bristle brush. And again, you may not be contouring like this every day, but if you're going to an event or you wanna have a special evening out, this is a great way. So we're gonna create a little definition in her nose by leaving the center portion light and we're gonna create two lines on either side. We're just gonna go down the side of your nose here. And side of your nose here. Okay. So you may be looking at her right now and thinking, okay, gone other day, she looks very natural. And that is why the next step is of key importance. Get yourself a nice big fluffy brush and get to blending. And you can just circle it and blend it in, blend it downwards into the skin. And just like that, we're popping up those cheekbones. You can see how it just looks warm, it looks sun-kissed. This is an easy way to look as though you've been out in the sun but you haven't really um, you've cheated the system, right? And you're still not going to have wrinkles. All right, so now we're going to move on to lids. And I think for Amanda, I would really love to bring out that hazel color in her eyes. So I'm going to be using, um, I think we'll use this one. This one is Shell and Malt. Their eyeshadows are great. They come in a multitude of colors. Um, the quality and the pigmentation in them is fantastic. And I think when you're looking for an eyeshadow, that's what's so important. You don't want to feel like you're putting it on and putting it on and still nothing is sticking to your eyelid. So um, I'm going to take the, a nice big brush like this to start with. And I'm going to use this soft pink color and get the color right up on there. Close. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to do this as an all over color, basically a base. It's light enough and blends enough with her skin. Again, go into the corner and down the brow line. Go ahead and look at the camera. And you can see it's just a nude basic color. Now we'll just do the other side. Now we're going to go with our angled pointy brush and with this brown color and I'm going to carry the color out and just halfway into her lid right into the crease open mm -hmm. let's take this brush away any residue go ahead and open look it's looking good it's looking good now we're gonna add a little pop of fun I'm gonna go back in, what is this one called? Oyster and Amethyst. I like this one a lot. Um, for hazel eyes, um, my eyes are very similar in color to you, so they change a lot, so you can really play up those features. And one of the colors that I use a lot is purple. Um, so don't be scared to try some fun colors. These are matte enough that you're not gonna look like it's 1982 and you're putting on you know, shiny purple eyeshadow. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right on the lid of her eye. And just give it a little bit of fun purple. Now we're just going to go back in with that big fluffy brush and give it a quick blend. Beautiful. Good. Okay, next step that we're going to do is I think we're gonna add a little bit of eyeliner 
And I think on you, we were gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use um, black. And you, it comes in, a, again, a bunch of different colors. One thing that I love about this is that not only is it the pencil, but it's got that little smudgy sponge at the end. So if you're doing a charcoal type looking eye or you want it to look something like that, you have that flexibility in with it. Um, so if you could just go ahead and close your eye. I am going to just go right over the lash line, kind of like the brows. I'm gonna extend it just a little bit past her natural eye. And then I like to just give it a quick smudge. Kind of hides any of your mistakes, I think. Go ahead and open. Beautiful. And now let's do this side. Beautiful. Look up. Okay. And since we're doing an evening look, I'm gonna go ahead and do just a bit of a dramatic under eye effect here for her today. Beautiful. Okay, go ahead and look. You can see it kind of blends into a soft gray and just really gives her eye a little defini definition. One little trick that I have is I have this little tiny angled brush and I am going to go ahead and use my rose spray. I'm gonna get it just a teensy bit wet. I'm going to go back in with that purple and now that it's wet, the pigment will be a little bit different. And I'm just gonna go ahead in there. And I'm gonna go look up, add just a little bit of that to the corner of her eye. Close. Switching to my pointy brush so I can just kind of blend it in. And then before we finish up, <clears throat> sometimes there's the need, you know, to put a, a little more cover up on areas that you might have missed. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit here. Um, like I said, she had mascara on first. So um, it's a little bit of flakes and little residue there. So I just want to lighten up under the eye just a little bit more, highlight along the tops of the cheekbones. All right, next step, um, they have a couple different ways to go about blush. They have um, this blush, which I've been using. I love the color hibiscus. It looks bright in the tube, but truly it's not. This is a cream blusher. I love their cream blushers. They're fabulous because they have a nice texture where if you're still looking for that luminosity in your skin, um, you're applying more of that into it. Now, they also have powder brushes that are equally great if that's your cup of tea. But for today for her, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use this and I'm gonna use this pretty pink hibiscus color. A little of this goes a very, very long way. And what's wonderful about this product is you can also use it on the lips. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right into the apples of her cheeks. And blend it into that bronzer line that we did. Keep being careful to not go too close to the eye and go ahead and look just so you can kind of see the difference so it just should look flushed and fresh and I go ahead and I add just a tip to the little bit of the nose if I'm running light I use this as um, a lipstick as, as well today I want to show you some other different color lipsticks but it, it really does work great awesome beautiful and fresh Okay, let's go ahead on into the lips. Um, okay, I'm going to give you this secret trick, and I'm sure it breaks all the laws of anything makeup. But what I have done, because I find it very, very difficult to find a nude lip pencil that is not too pinky for my skin. So I buy the, um, the light. Um, is this one? No, nope, that one's so dark. Where is it? Oh, here it is. I use the light eyebrow pencil as my nude lip liner. I'm sure that's wrong. I'm sure you're not supposed to, but it works for me. So I'm gonna let it work for you as well today.
So just go ahead and relax your lips. And I go in and I line. And same thing with the eyebrows for her lips. We're gonna give the illusion that they're very plump. And then just go ahead and define them. She has a great bow in her lip at the top. So we're gonna play that up. And you can see, it looks very brown now, but once you add in your pinks and stuff onto your lips, for whatever reason, that works for me. Um, I think for you today, we're gonna use this rose color. You can go up. Lipsticks are one of their best things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and blend your lips. This is rose. They're very moisturizing. So I have a tendency to get very dry drip lips and they are very, very moisturizing. They feel good on your lips. Go ahead and blend. So we can really work that um, lip liner in. That's good. And this color is absolutely beautiful. One of my other favorite things um, are their lip glosses. I'm a lip gloss girl. Some people don't love to put lip gloss on. They don't like the gooiness of it. Like I said, my lips tend to have a tendency to be dry. So I use them often. Um, this one is peony. I think for spring it's beautiful. It looks really bright pink in there. It really is not bright pink. It is just a very soft um, pink. And I just go ahead and put it to the center of my lips and at the cupids. I believe that's called the cupid's bow. I'm not 100% sure. Go ahead and mush. Beautiful. Go ahead and look at the camera. And great. Um, and then this would be, you know, you have, the only step that we did not do was mascara. As I said, she already had it on. For special evenings, this is a product. It's like another secret weapon for us women that I have a tendency to really love. It's called Lustro Oil. It's shimmer oil. You can use it everywhere. You can use it on your legs. You can use it on your arms. You can use it on your cleavage. You can use it, I believe that's called decollage. You can use it um, in your hair. You can use it everywhere and it's a fantastic product and I use it and it smells great. Um, so anyways, I just go ahead and I put a little bit into the palm of my hand. I warm it up and I just go ahead and press it into my skin. It just gives a nice glow. Adds a little bit of shimmer. Last step, I usually go in back in with my rose water spray. Just a couple spritzes to really set that makeup. And before you know it, you are done. And so you can see with our gorgeous model, let's take this off and make her look human again because she's been so very brave. And we can let her hair down. And you can see with her coloring of her hair and the way, um, the look that she's going for, you can see that Amanda does no longer look like a mother of four. She looks like a fantastic supermodel that she is. Thank you so much for having the patience to watch this long video. And I hope you got some secret trips and had some fun. And I hope you're sitting and having a glass of wine while you're doing it. And we hope to see you very, very soon at the store. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.